Hello everybody, Corn Syrup Commando here again with another video. I want to talk a little bit about my AR-15, my first AR-15 build. Uh, first of all, there was a bit of noise when I was filming the video, so I decided to do a voiceover the first time doing that, so hopefully that'll turn out okay and not sound too much like I'm in a hollow box. But anyway, I just wanted to share that, so I'll just go ahead and get started. The first place to start, probably the most logical starting point, will be the receivers. The receivers are pretty much the heart of any firearm. And uh, these are from Henderson Defense Industries. They are NP3 coated uh, receivers, both of them. And the lower is a machine billet and the upper is forged. I went with the MP3 coating primarily because I just wanted the look. I didn't want to build my first rifle as an all black rifle. I just like the two tone look and this is a look that I really did like. Another thing that was very attractive to me about the Henderson Defense was th their price. Their price is just phenomenal. At $250 for both the upper and lower receiver was pretty good. When I was looking around locally in my uh, local area here at the gun shops and other places, I couldn't find a lower billet alone that was just a, the standard uh, uh, anodized or the, the parkerized finish on those for under $600 just for the lower. So I was pretty happy to find the MP3 coated receiver set for $250 at Henderson Defense. As you see here, I have a picture of the stripped lower receiver before I ever got things started on it, just so I, I didn't document it very well, so I don't have very much documentation of the build, but I at least wanted to throw that in there. As far as the receivers go, I did paint them with an acrylic paint and that worked out pretty well because acrylic is pretty forgiving paint so I was able to just kind of brush it on over the uh, recessed areas and then wipe it off with a damp cloth and it provides for a pretty nice looking finish and it gives that extra fine touch I think to the receiver. Another detail I decided to go with on the upper receiver is the ejector port door cover and I decided to go with the etched version with the Gadsden flag and the US flag. It just adds a little bit of patriotism to the gun and I just like the look of it. The next thing I'll talk about is the buttstock. This is a CAA CBST 6 position buttstock on a commercial tube. In addition to the buttstock having just a little bit of a storage area, it also has the option to put on a, an adjustable cheek weld and the cheek weld just pops on and off. It's just got a little spring-loaded clip on it here that uh, you just uh, uh, pull it down and slide it to slide it forward to pull it off, and then it can be adjusted pretty much in variable uh, to variable heights depending on the type of optics that you're running, and it's really nice. I enhanced mine a little bit. I was playing around with some carbon fiber look, so I picked up some carbon fiber sort of uh, it's like contact paper that I got from the hobby shop just to see if I kind of like the look of the carbon fiber, and so I I played with a little bit of that on there as you can see in the photos. Another nice feature of the CBST buttstock is the fact that it has a couple quick disconnect sling attach points on it. The UPG pistol grip is quite versatile in the fact that it comes with three interchangeable back straps and three interchangeable finger grooves so you can get a fit that works to your hand size and shape. Now let's talk a little bit about the barrel. This is a Delton 16 inch barrel chambered for 5.56 NATO. It's got a 1 and 9 twist. It's a standard barrel and it came with a normal parkerized finish. I bought a complete upper assembly because at the time I built this gun I could not get the parts separately but I did have to completely disassemble it to have it Cerakoted as you can see in the photographs and this is Cerakoted with the H150 Savage Stainless Cerakote and that was the color that matched my receivers as close as I could get them. Cerakote was great with regard to sending me the swatches I needed so I could match the color as closely as possible and for anybody that needs that stuff just go to the Cerakote website and you can order color swatches if you're trying to match something in particular. I'm very impressed with the Cerakote finish on this barrel. While we're talking about the barrel I want to talk about the barrel extension and since I didn't cover it in the topic when I was talking about the receivers I did want to point out that the receivers from Henderson Defense do not come with the feed ramps cut out of them. But with that said, I do want to say that I haven't had any feed problems at all. Now let's move to the business end of the barrel and I just went with the standard A2 birdcage flash hider until I find that I need something different. This one works for me. I like the classic look of it and it seems to just be doing the job fine for me. 
One thing I'd like to point out is that when you're installing the flash hider, the concave end of the washer goes towards the muzzle device itself. So basically facing forward, the concave end is facing forward. I had to figure all that out when I, I had disassembled the upper assembly, like I said earlier, to get the barrel seracoded, but I didn't pay attention exactly how that crush washer came off there, so I had to do a little research to figure out how it goes back on, and that is what I found out. And I'm using the F marked front sight base. The F, as I understand it, stands for flat top, and the difference between the F marked front sight base and the standard front sight, sight base is about 40 thousandths difference in height of the shelf, and that can be seen here in the diagrams. While we're on the topic of the front sight base, you'll notice that I'm using the crosshair style front sight in lieu of the standard front sight post that's on most uh, standard stock ARs. One nice thing about building a mid-length gas system rifle is the fact that it has the proper proportions to install a bayonet if that's something you desire. And as you can see right here, I've done just that. I've taken advantage of the bayonet lug on my front sight base to install a bayonet. And now on to sights. I went with the ever popular Magpul backup iron sights, the flip up style. And again, I was going for just a nice compromise of something that has some decent quality to it without breaking the bank. And so far they seem to be working just fine for me. And while we're on the topic of accessories, as you can see here, I have installed a grip pod. I was originally going to go with a generic version of the grip pod because I'm not looking for any real rugged use of it, but I was able to find this grip pod online for under $50, so I figured if I can get the real thing for not much more than the knockoffs, I figured that's the route I would take. And like many others before me, I've opted for the Magpul mid-length handguard. I just like the, the styling of it, and it has a reasonable price tag, and they're very durable, and I've been very happy with it. I like the fit. Of it, and as you can see from the pictures, I was playing around a little bit more with that carbon fiber look just to kind of see what I look like. Not, I haven't totally settled on whether or not I really like it or or not yet, but uh, for now, I'm going with it. You can also see on my handguard that I, I have the Impact Weapons Components Quick Release Sling Mount. That's kind of a mouthful to say. Anyway, I've done a, I did a complete other video on the installation of that sling mount that you can look for in my list of videos. In the beginning of the video, I made reference to the uh, receivers being the heart of the gun. Actually, the heart of the gun is really the barrel and the bolt carrier group. And uh, I just wanted to point out, I have basically just a standard bolt carrier group for the AR-15 right here. It does have a lot of the quality features of a good bolt carrier group and the fact that the uh, gas key screws are staked in and that it has um, the uh, bolt itself has been magnetic particle inspected and high pressure tested and it seems to be a fine bolt at this point in time but again it's nothing special just sort of the standard bolt that came with the Delton upper assembly that I got. Another nice feature of the standard 5.56 or 223 caliber for the AR-15 platform is for a very simple change out of the bolt assembly and a magazine you can shoot 22 long rifle through the same gun that way you're using the exact same platform same weight same optics same everything that you're used to and just using the 22 ammunition which of course is a lot of fun and quite a bit cheaper so uh, that is one of the reasons I went with the one and nine twist barrel as well because I was going to be shooting the 22 which obviously is a much lighter weight bullet and I've been shooting this thing I haven't shot it any more than 100 yards at this point but up to 100 the 100 yard mark Everything is every bit as accurate with the 22 as it is with the 556 or the 223. Another thing I want to point out here, back to the receivers that I didn't talk about earlier when we were on the receiver section, is this little red piece here. It's a little rubber piece. It's called an AccuWedge. And all it does is creates a little bit of tension between the upper and the lower receiver when you push the aft pin through it. And it, to my understanding, it doesn't help in any accuracy in any way, but it does just help that upper and lower from that slight bit of play that most receiver sets do have in them. So that's the end of most of the features that I wanted to point out. I'm not going to get into optics. I've had a few different red dots on it. Nothing fancy, just uh, the lower end uh, different red dots and I've been pretty happy with all of them for the plinking that I do. I'm not a hunter and I'm not a competition shooter at this point and so I'm just going out plinking having some fun so I've tried everything from the $20 red dots up to the most expensive one I have is about an $80 red dot 
and I uh, get about the same results out of them. They seem to hold zero pretty good, and that's what I use, so I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but uh, this is what I built, and I just wanted to share as a new builder and somewhat new to AR-15s. I wanted to just share what it is I built, why I chose what I chose, and just give you all some idea of what might be out there. The total build was a little over $800 in 2012 dollars. That was about summer of 2012 when I gathered everything and put it all together. And those prices have come back to about that point now here in uh, the spring of 2014. So they spiked up for a little while, but uh, they've come right back down. So again, I just wanted to share and I hope everybody enjoyed watching this video. I hope you got a little bit out of it. If you have any questions, do please leave comments or send me a question or whatever you want and I'll see what I can do to get it answered. But again, I'm very happy with it for the sh type of shooting that I do, which is just sports shooting and plinking and having a little bit of fun. And you know, I also have it obviously for self-protection when needed. And uh, that's about it. Have a great day. Corn Syrup Commando out. Pretty good, huh? Yeah! Wow! <laughs> I felt that shockwave! Yeah! yeah. And made you jump out of your seat! Yeah! <laughs>